Next chapter. We've got the masks. Chapter 3, The Ascent. The Strange Practices of a Secretive Society. Oh, I know. He was just saying that so that the Brotherhood of Masks get off his back. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. A naked man? <laughs> a naked man in the bushes? Looks like he was part of a gang. Or part of the Brotherhood, maybe. The tattoo depicts a hand and an eye. He was loaded! Wait. Wait a second. Someone tied him up, removed his clothes, and left him with his clothes? Ash Blair. Wait! This is... This is Gorin! David, the gathering will be on March 14th. To follow our plan, we should be there at least two hours before midnight. The target will arrive in full costume. Grab ropes and weapons. WK. David Gorin is working with Walter Keen? What is happening? To David Gorin for reliable service from EC, Edmund Cloudsley. Ninja pistol, clean new coat, Walter Keen stuff. This is Walter Keen. Wait, so they. Either he stole Gorin's stuff, or they kidnapped David Gorin. Yeah, someone was dragged away. Lots of footprints. Someone followed. A couple people followed. Okay, so they ambushed him here, and then two of them dragged off David Gorin, and the others just scattered. Into the hobbit hole. Brothers wear masks. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. Dark hands. These fucking dark hands. Proud beasts and water snakes. So we did deal with the proud beasts. Willard was part of the proud beasts. They're all working together to take down Edmund Cloudsley. Brothers wear robes appropriate to their rank. Master, steward, and initiate. Oh! Wait a second, that guy's an initiate! Wait, this isn't David Gorin or Walter Keen, is it? They just jumped someone! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, I understand now. They're breaking in! January 5th, 1789. Masters. I ventured on the Order's mission to reclaim our fire-breathing relic and with great resolve, punish the despicable enemy. I, with a few brave companions, fearlessly entered his hideout in a remote hunting cabin. Wait, is this Walter? It is Walter Keen! But the devil had prepared a treacherous trap and in an explosion, slaughtered my dearest friends as we entered his study. Thanks to my sturdy physique, I survived the blast only to be assaulted by the enemy's lackey, assassin warrior David Gorin, and a pack of bloodthirsty hounds. After an hour of fight, I received numerous deadly wounds, in spite of which I prevailed and defeated my assailants with my martial training. I discovered the enemy's dead body, slain by the trap of his own making, but no trace of the relic. Oh, he did die. I'm forced to go into hiding because the government's watchmen are tracking me. Once I've recovered from my deadly wounds and shaken off the watchmen, I will send you the next report. May the griffin awaken. Walter Keen. October 20th, 1789. Masters, I must apologize a thousand times for my absence, but my road to recovery was full of peril and valor that cannot be sufficiently conveyed in writing. The government dogs and spies chased me tirelessly and I was forced to seek refuge in Aquitania to recover from my still dire wounds. There I finally bested my pursuers with the help of Lazarus Hurst, a young resourceful gentleman whom I met in a remote manner one dark winter's night. 
Not only did he earn my trust by stepping into the fray against the villains, but he turned out to be well versed in the arcane arts. Of course, not yet close to your skills. I finally recovered and planned to return to Albion. I suggest that Lazarus would be a fine addition to the order. I vouch for him and will invite him to undergo the appropriate trial. May the griffin awaken. Walter Key. I'm very suspicious of these people being named. January 16th, 1790. Illuminated Masters, I object to the admittance of the individual Lazarus Hurst to our brethren. I submit that our dark hand brother Walter Keen, who vouches for him, cannot be trusted because he is a liar and a thief. I am certain that on dispatching our enemy, he kept the gold fire breathing relic for himself. Nothing will move me on this. He must produce the relic, apologize personally to me, and afterwards be expelled from our brotherhood, Sir Geoffrey Sinclair. Yeah, something about Walter Keen doesn't sound like he'd be Walter Keen anymore. Maybe he's Edmund Cloudsley. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this clue has been added to the thinking panel. Okay. Um, let's look around, shall we? Let's be nosy. Done when an accuser has challenged a defender. Both drinkers must be barefoot. The substance is added depending on the severity of the accusation, including deadly poison. Add substance to one of the cups. Defender chooses first. Accuser chooses the remaining. Both partake in cups. Is your princess bride? Ritual of squabble. Only initiates can be defender and accuser. The sword must be borne by any dark hand. Required decorations of the hall, a grim reaper, the never tiring teacher, the feeder of mouths. I don't know what any of those look like. Ritual of conflict. The accuser must deeply hate the defender. The sword must be borne by any initiate. Required decorations of the hall, the never tiring teacher, the keeper of treasures, the mirror of the soul, the ritual of dispute. Only stewards or higher rank can be defender and accuser. The scepter must be borne by water snake master. Required decorations of the hall, the keeper of treasures, the never tiring teacher, the grim reaper. Ritual of discord. The houses of the accuser and defender stand behind their brothers. This sounds like what we're dealing with here. The scepter must be borne by dark hand master. Required decorations of the hall. The speaker to the blind, the grim reaper, the keeper of treasures. So are the houses standing behind? No, they're not. Then I think this is just the squabble one. Between two initiates. Oh, wait, but here's the Grim Reaper. Let us await the results from the chamber below. We've got a sword. And a ceremonial scepter. Okay, so... We have Grim Reaper. That could be anything. Something mentioned the scepter, though, right? The scepter must be borne by the Dark Hand Master. Scepter must be borne by Water Snake Master. <laughs> Sword must be borne. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Let's keep inspecting. We've got a ton to look at. Where else can we go? Here? Okay. House on his back. I don't know. Big head eating. Fish in a room. Two men seasons. <laughs> Prepare to receive what you have earned. Oh my. Um, okay, so this isn't Dark Hand or whatever. Ooh. February 10th, 1790. Brother, a member of our order has proposed a new candidate to join our brotherhood. Our brother's trustworthiness, however, has been challenged. Therefore, we have decided to take measures to resolve the fate of these individuals. If the brother proves himself, he can vouch for the newcomer. If the newcomer survives the appropriate trial, he will join our ranks. So they're talking about Lazarus. 
You are summoned to join our gathering on March 14th and fulfill your role in the Rites of the Brotherhood, Council of Masters. So Walter Keen's trustworthiness has been challenged. So Walter Keen is in the trial. He's probably dead upstairs. I have signaled to Griffin who I am. I accept my fate, whatever it may be. Wow, this is a lot. Now then, the coats. I don't know what the coats are. But we do have a ritual here. We've got an initiation ritual. Oh, here. We're missing some. Okay, Inception, you must endure the tests of slug, fire, water, earth. Administered, administered by Proud Beast Steward. Evaluation. You must endure the test of tree, 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 fire, time, water. Transition. You must endure the test of star, fire, water, snail. Admission. You must endure the test of snail, time, water, star. Um, administered by master. Administered by water snake master. So, snail, uh, inception. And that is a proud beast steward. There we go. Okay, so inception. Green coat is important because that's a steward now. So everyone here with a green coat is a steward. And what that means is it's not an initiate challenge. So we can completely disregard this because only initiates can be defender and accuser for either of these conflicts. Wait, only for this one. Accuser must deeply hate the defender. Uh, I don't think he could. I don't think he hates them. I don't. Know, I think it's a little, it's a little out there, you know. Only stewards and hire. So dispute or discord. It's not discord. Because the houses of the accuser and defender must stand behind the brothers, and everyone's quite scrambled here. So it must be dispute. Dispute. They are trying to figure out whether they accept Walter Keane or not, right? So that makes sense of it being a dispute. Um, we know that red is proud beasts. We know that... White is- oh, we don't know that this is a water snake, but I mean, it's blue and it has scales, okay? Um, so I'm gonna put water snake there. I'm gonna- yeah. And then dark hand... Dark, I don't have any more dark hands. Wait, I don't- I don't have any more dark, dark hands to use here. Oh wait, it's right here. Dark hand. And, um, water snake. Duh. Now we have to figure out if these are masters or not. So the scepter must be borne by the water snake master. So yes, white is master. White is master. That's a master. And that means these violet coats are initiates? No. Let's see if we can confirm our suspicions here, shall we? Because we do have this entire section right here. Dark hand and water snake. That's correct, it's correct. No, it's right, it's right. I think maybe it wants a name from us here. Okay, so the scroll is not filled in, obviously. Blank was challenged. He was challenged to a dispute ritual. He, along with Blank, Ambushed blank. They ambushed a dark hand initiate. Blank posing as. Okay, so somebody took his place posing as dark hand initiate. Dark hand initiate. Wait, this is David Gorin! Gorin! This is David Gorin right here! Right here! It's, he's not a dark head initiate! David Gorin. You're in there. 
You've broken into their ranks! <gasps> yes! Oh my god! The espionage! Okay, um... David Gorin... Posing as Darkhand Initiate... Blank to blank with a blank, which blank had no blank, 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 the other blank, and died. <laughs> Meanwhile, blank passed the blank ritual to become blank. Um, to become, to become, um, Proud Beast Steward passed the Inception ritual. Okay, Lazarus Hurst. Uh, while the other... Drank the other cup and died. Jeffrey Sinclair. I'm reading it backwards now so that uh, it's just easier to process. <laughs> um, blank... Oh, this is a long sentence. David Gorin posing as Dark Hand Initiate. Uh, the only thing that makes sense here is signaled. Signaled to Walter Keen with a... What was he holding? A tankard. Tankard. With a tankard, which cup which cup had no poison in it. So he was helping Walter Keen. Yeah, they were working together. That's what the note at the beginning said, right? So Walter Keen wants to take down the cult as well, even though he's a part of it? Walter Keen was challenged to a dispute ritual. I think what happened back at the cabin so we're going back an episode i think what happened is um after the explosion where the robbers died i think edmund hired walter keen as an assistant probably like turned him over so walter keen is a defect and so walter keen and david goren then lied about edmund cloudsley being dead because, yeah, he didn't turn in the Golden Idol. That's why there's suspicion on him to begin with. And I think that's because he never took the Golden Idol. Edmund still has it. I think that's what's going on here. Okay, okay, okay. He, along with David Gorin, ambushed... Ambushed a dark hand initiate. This is so repetitive. No, come on! Two hours later. Meanwhile, Lazarus Hurst passed the inception ritual to become a pro Oh, sorry, this is not to become a proud beast steward. This is an initiate. There we go. After being challenged to a ritual with potentially deadly consequences, Walter conspired with David to devise a plan which would ensure his own safety. They captured a Brotherhood member on his way to the gathering. David took his costume so that during the ritual of dispute, he could indicate to Walter which cup was poisoned. Therefore, Walter chose the safe cup and his opponent drank the poison and died. Okay, so we pretty much nailed that one. Uh, so now we're on episode eight. Chapter three, The Ascent, The Crowning Celebration by the Lighthouse. Oh, and this is the only one. Wow, it's been a- Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> we gotta go up the lighthouse, you guys. <laughs> There's a baptism going on here. Griffin Rebirth. The one who claims to be Griffin Reborn must perform a miracle. If someone repeats the miracle, it is proven that it was not a miracle, but mere magic. Claimant is punished with death. If no one can repeat the miracle, the masks fall. Claimant is crowned as Griffin Reborn. 
The masks are on the ground. <laughs> Chronicles of Griffin Reborn. In 1725, the first Dark Hand Lord Harrington demonstrated flying. He jumped off a cliff to his death. <laughs> demonstration of flying <laughs> that's just plummeting to your death in 1756 proud beast master lord pledsley performed a seance talking to the spirits lord angus mcbain repeated the miracle proving him unworthy oh no and then he of course died right is that what it said yeah, if someone repeats the miracle, the claimant is punished with death. That's awful. In 1764, Dark Hand Master Lord Jones demonstrated the creation of a homunculus. Lord Angus McBain, again, produced a homunculus as well. Man, this guy's out for blood. In 1771, Proud Beast Master Lord White carried out the hypnosis of a servant. Lord Angus McBain, yet again, hypnotized the same man as well. Okay, so McBain, the bane of all of existence, the bane of this entire cult. That was an actual miracle, unbelievable. So there is a Griffin reborn. Ruby ring, and what's he got? A stamp? Heavy seal that says seven. It's inverted. Hmm? Why do we want to know about his feet? What, what is this? Foot finder? Five strange looking masks. Kneel before Griffin reborn and make ready. I will lead you brothers to great many changes. It's Edmund Cloudsley, y'all. Wait! He's young! Miracle preparation. After the dot, upside down J, whatever that is, <laughs> input, aim at the sky. Press the lever to maximum position and hold for at least 10 seconds. At this point, the idol should be full enough to perform the miracle once. Miracle hypothesis. The water works better, but the effect is not as convincing. Therefore, that glyph. Main challenge is ensuring my balance when holding onto the idol. Practice is paramount. So idol is facing the sky, right? I mean, it's facing down on this page, but it's... According to this, it has to aim at the sky. What's it doing then? Blowing air? Was that the air glyph? The vacuum glyph? Safety notice! Upon pulling the trigger, if the glyph input is meaningful, the idol will perform the intended action on the target it can see. If its eye is red, it is ready for upside down J input and it will turn blue afterwards. So we know this. If the eye is blue, you can only perform dot upside down J input and it will turn right afterwards. So that's just repeating a previous page we've seen. What else is here? And thus Griffin Reborn revealed himself to his brothers by demonstrating a true miracle. Silver crown with gems. So these are the two masters. A set of heavy oars. What is with their feet? Here, I brought back your staff, O Griffin Reborn. Oh, this is Walter Keen. May 14th, 1791. Dear Master McBain, These threats to contact the Chief Inspector about my past offend me greatly. Being an honest soul, I have no choice but to comply with your base demands. I may have invited Lazarus into our brotherhood, but he has not shared all his secrets with me. 
Luckily, I had an opportunity to see him practicing this miracle. He has a magical artifact hidden in his cane. When performing the miracle, he input the following glyphs. That's it. That's that's the that's the vacuum glyph, yeah? Then he presses a small lever on the handle of the cane, and it grants him the powers to demonstrate the miracle. I have no doubt that the staff will work just as well in your hands as his. Sincerely, Dark Hand Steward. So this is obviously from uh, from Walter Keen. So Walter Keen is triple crossing us here. Lazarus is Edmund Cloudsley, who he helped initiate into the cult. But I think he wanted the secrets of the miracle of youth for his real master, McBean. Now the question is, which one of them is McBean? A golden snuff box filled with opium powder. Ruby ring and... Oh, this is the thing! Oh, that's why it was upside down on the page! Or why the idol was facing down on the page! Because that's... This is the cane! This clue has been added to the thinking panel. The golden idol is enclosed within the handle of the ornamental cane. And it's open for the air to come out. He said it works better in water. So my question is, how does it turn him young again? I like how deranged the music sounds right now too, by the way. <laughs> um, so we don't have names yet. Oh, but we know who you are. What an honor to experience such a historical event. June 3rd, 1791. Dear Watersnake Brother Maker, as the director of the Seven Seas Trading Company, I do not assess work applications. Please go through the official channels so my staff can evaluate your credentials as an attorney. Dark Hand Master JT. Is this the lawyer that helped with Sebastian Cloudsley's will? Everyone's. Everyone's part of the cult! Protocol of an attempt to demonstrate a miracle. June 23rd, 1791. Location, the lighthouse on Gull Islet, near the Horn of Codhead. Time, noon. Present, Lord Angus McBain, Lord Alistair Cock, Dr. James Turner, Sir Walter Keane, Mr. Lazarus Hurst. In charge of notes, Mr. Nicholas Maker. It is... Okay, well, we have names now. Lazarus Hurst, Nicholas Maker. We don't know who's who for these old guys. So we're just gonna keep inspecting stuff. Oh, who's dead here? <gasps> oh, that's the other side of the cane. Oh, this is Angus McBain. You fool. <laughs> April 13th, 1791. Watersnake Master. Lately, I've experienced disturbing dreams and I can feel cursed. Are you the source of this with your magic? Desist immediately and know that when pushed, my rage is absolute. Do not toy with the well-being of the Empire's general for I do not tolerate being attacked. In my, vi in my many voyages, I have learned the dark arts too. If need be, I will summon a thousand invisible demons to crush your bones, proud beast master. June 15th, 1791. Dear friend, it is not so simple for me to get you a seat alongside me on the court of directors at the Seven Seas Company. As a doctor, I, re I recommend you to stop obsessing over it. It will only unbalance your humors. Let us discuss alternatives at the next party at Kensington Palace. Thanks, friend. <laughs> Angus McBain, you old fool. All right, well, we got two more guys back there. Both his legs appear to be broken. 
The man is not breathing and has a severe wound at the back of his head. The armor appears broken. I think this second part had to do with Angus Bane stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, people who had the magic relic in their hands chronologically. Um, Lazarus Hurst, aka Edmund Cloudsley, um, Angus McBain, and then Walter Keane has it right now. Yeah. And, well, he's obviously dead from a something. <laughs> a head wound. Um, again, we don't know who these old guys are yet. The door is locked from the inside. All right, let's see who's in here. By guarding the lighthouse, you guard the Empire, General Alistair Cock. He's a water snake guy. Wait, what else am I missing here? It's still yellow. Oh, lighthouse? <laughs> Wait, Alistair. I'm guessing this is Alistair then? Because this is third and he's third right here. So, Alistair. And this then means you're James Turner. Um, also this one over here, let me move my camera so you guys can read along with me. Blank blackmailed blank to find out how blank would perform the miracle. Angus McBean. Blackmailed Walter Keen. Okay, that would make sense. For the miracle of... I'm gonna say flying. Because the only thing that he can do with this is blow out air, right? And that would explain the head wound. Um, but it's good to know that Walter Keane isn't triple crossing us and he was just blackmailed. That makes it a little better. I mean, like, just a tiny bit. He still betrayed him. Alright, let's continue investigating here. A trap door that connects the staircase to the top of the lighthouse. Not locked. Um, okay, so let's figure out the order of events. Blank jumped. Uh, Lazarus Hurst jumped from the lighthouse using the cane. Wait, there is no cane. Using the idol. Oh. <laughs> Using the idol to demonstrate the miracle of flying. Right? And became Griffin Reborn. Blank. 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 The blank afterwards. Oh, wait. Is it just jumped from the lighthouse afterwards? Angus McBain... Jumped from the lighthouse afterwards. <laughs> Why is that so dumb? <laughs> it's just the same thing, Rehash. That's so funny. I mean, that is what he did. When Lazarus Hurst jumped from the lighthouse and survived, Using the hidden golden idol, Master Angus McBain thought he had enough information to repeat the miracle and prevent Lazarus from becoming Griffin Reborn. He seized the staff from Lazarus and locked the lighthouse door to prevent foul play. However, he did not know all the secrets of the idol. It did not work for him, and Angus jumped to his death. I mean, honestly, deserved. He killed so many people, proving them wrong. So, Angus, I am not sorry for you. <laughs> but now... Now Edmund Cloudsley is in charge of the cult that tried to kill him and take the idol from him. So how is this going to go down? Chapter 3, The Ascent. The Interrupted Weekend at the Doctor's Salon. 
We've got a tea house, chess house, croquet field, library, salon, flower beds, flower beds, fountain. That's a lot. <laughs> Looks like we're in the library though, considering there's books here. This is such a mess. However, we will clean the blood out of the rug. Oh lord, I did not expect something like this in our household. Slightly grassy garden shields. Ha, huh, leveled. Your plan to frame Patu is sublime, but your missing button is more than enough proof that you did it. Constable, please escort this man out. This is a doctor? Doctor. The only doctor we've come across is the guy from the first episode who was pushed off a cliff. And this surely can't be the same doctor because Edmund is here. A full glass of sherry, almost empty glass of sherry. Oh, and the fallen bottle. James, this is preposterous. You know damn well that he was killed by that Lemurian savage. May 8th, 1792. Dear friend, now that the elections are over, please join me for a leisurely weekend at my manor with good old Augustus and some other fine fellas. We will have some drinks and discuss what to do about that prime minister position. Kindly confirm your presence, Dr. James Turner. Strangely enough, we did not get a name from that. Like, as a, as a hint. As a statement. This is outrageous! I thought you were an honorable man leveled, not some acquitted Aquitanian agent trying to sabotage our friendly relations with Lemuria and provoke a conflict. Names. He stole his life just like that. What is with his wig? The doctor's a smart man since he saw through his. Uh, wait. The doctor's a smart man since he saw through his lies. May eighth, seventeen ninety-two. Dear friend. At one of the balls, you said that you would love to meet someone actually interesting. I'm having a weekend of drinks at my manor, and a prince from the 11th clan of Lemuria will be joining us. Please do us the honor of your company, too. Kindly confirm your presence, Dr. James Turner. Dr. James Turner seems to be, uh... The cause of all of this, really. He's, he brought everyone together for this! Hmm. I hope the host did not notice me when he was leaning over the sleeping eye patch gentleman. Huh? Dear Prince, I heard that you got invited to a party by the director of Seven Seas Company himself. I know you hate associating with these invaders and thieves, but this might be just the opportunity that we seek to reclaim our honor. May 8th, 1792. Dear Prince, as you know, I am a great aficionado of Lemurian culture. It would be my pleasure to invite a member of the Patu clan to spend a leisurely weekend at my estate with some of our own political dignitaries. Kindly confirm your presence, Dr. James Turner. I hate James Turner's language. <laughs> Kindly confirm your presence. Uh, a brownstone slate seal. A clean Lemurian war club. Okay. Oh god. Believe me, my lord, I do not feel comfortable arresting a prime ministerial candidate, but I must ask you to follow me. Constable number one, Arthur Faulkner. Oh, thanks for giving us your name right off the bat. Love that. <laughs> testimonies. Oh, we've got all their testimonies. Let's come back to this, actually. Psychoactive plants, drug symptoms, spotty onion, an illusion of unity with the universe, increased appetites, hiccups, so you get high. <laughs> Black poppy, sleepiness, whites of eyes get a pink tint. Lemurian lichen, hyper concentration on one thing, loss of perception of time, rapid blinking. I mean, they're all psychoactive, so you get high with everything. Redberry, surge of energy, vocalization of all your thoughts, twitching, aggression. Well, he's got the whites in his eyes. The man is not breathing and has a huge vertical wound on his forehead. Listen, 
Apologies for the shouting match yesterday. Let's continue our discussion at noon. May 8th, 1792. Dear friend, the elections are over, so let's uphold tradition and have a leisurely weekend at my place with you and Lovell to discuss the prime minister situation. Please join us on May 12th. Kindly confirm your presence, Dr. James Turner. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got the whites of his eyes! Black Poppy! He fell asleep on his own sword, the madman. <laughs> oh, wait! Oh, on this boomerang! The madman! The seals of the twelve Lemurian clans. Yep, it fell from here. Yikes. Okay. Um, we did see a picture of his symbol, which is two hands and a... Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Triangles in a square. Triangles in a... Oh, there's lots of triangles and squares. Oh, but there's hands here. This, this one. This one. And... Uh, uh, okay, ugh, that's hurting my head now trying to visualize it. I can't visualize. All right, Constable. Let's get the testimonies. Leppold claims that... Number one, had a glass of sherry with James in the library and became drowsy. Number two, as he was falling asleep, saw the Lemurian observing him through the glass door. There's a glass door. Number three, woke up, found the butler on the floor asleep. Number four, woke up the butler. Number five, entered the salon and found the body. Number six, upon inspecting the weapon, deduced that the Lemurian was the murderer. Number seven, instructed the butler to raise the Gideon claims that... Number one, played croquet with Ergen in the morning. Number two, they got bored and went to drink tea in the tea house. Number three, Ergen drew his attention to the interesting design of the chess house. Number four, saw Lord Alistair Cook lecture the butler. Number five, saw Master Turner come to the chess house and send the butler away, just as Ergen was remarking on the beauty of the chess house. Number six, saw Lord Alistair leaving the chess house and returned shortly afterwards. Okay, we've got... We've got more of the cult leaders here. I didn't even recognize any of them. Um, Ergen, slightly difficult to understand what he says. Potentially because he has challenges with our language. Claims that, number one, everything young Master Bell says is absolutely correct. Claims that... Number one, he drank a glass of sour sherry with Blanchard in the library in the morning. Number two, then he went to the chess house where he found Lord Alistair and the butler. Number three, ordered the butler to clean up the library and get rid of the bad sherry. Number four, spent the rest of the time playing chess with Alistair until the alarm was raised. NB. What does NB mean? This is the second time we've seen it. As the master of the house, he led the interrogation of the suspects. Claims that, number one, in the morning, he practiced chess at the chess house and educated the butler on his lack of military training. Number two, sometime in the afternoon, Dr. Turner arrived and sent the butler away. Number three, they played together and he was very close to winning when the alarm was raised. So let's put in some names, shall we? Um, James... James Turner, this is Doctor, right? This is Prince of Patu. <laughs> Patu guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know who's dead, actually. William claims that, number one, planted and pruned all morning by the chrysanthemum bush saw the young gentleman and the foreigner leave the croquet and go behind the manor. Number two, in the afternoon, moved to the rose bush. From there, saw Lord Augustus leave the fountain at around noon. Continued his work, uh, number three, continued his work on the roses until the alarm was raised by Mr. Hill. Claims that, number one, served Lord Alistair in the chess house in the morning. Number two, his master arrived and instructed him to dispose of the spoilt sherry that he and Lord Leopold had drunk, and then go to assist Mr. Spade in the garden. 
Number three, on entering the library to take away the glasses, found Lord Leppold asleep. Number four, suddenly was overcome by dizziness and fainted due to his weak heart. Number five, was woken by Lord Leppold and was instructed to raise the alarm. Six, then saw the deceased lying in the salon. You know, I'm still not sure who's dead here. <laughs> that was a lot of text, a lot of testimony, a lot of words. Um... You know, this guy looks familiar. Is this Alistair? Oh, there's so many people. Uh, Leppold is dead. Okay, let's, let's come back to this. I need more. I need something that isn't the names and the testimony. An unfinished croquet match on a grass field. Chrysanthemum bushes. Oh, I don't want to go back in. Two cups of spicy smelling tea, one almost empty, the other untouched. The chess house. Oh! The London Gazetteer, May 11th, 1792. Who will be the new Prime Minister? Election results. New party order, 36%. Moderates, 32 Loyalists, 29 New party order, loyalists, and moderates. Wait, aren't these each a guest at the house? Isn't the moderates led by Leppold, the, the dead guy? And that's the eye patch guy. And I, uh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> no clue. You kind of look like uh, what Edmund looks like now, Mr. Lazarus. The new order party have the most MPs, but it is clear the two old parties will form a coalition. This means either Loyalist leader Blanchard or moderate leader Valentine will become the prime minister, leaving Lazarus Hurst and his party in the opposition. That is Lazarus Hurst. So we've got eye patch guy is Blanchard. And yeah, this is totally Alistair. Gustus Blanchard. Who do I have wrong? Wait, who's dead? Wait, his name is Leppold. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, Augustus Valentine is the victim. The murder weapon could still be the boomerang. We did see blood on it. The salon is where he was murdered. Could be the library though, honestly. But he's, he's like right here. So, Salon. Um, body was found by... It has to be... Podrick Hill, the, the, the servant. But something is wrong. Was woken by Lord Leppold. Oh! Wait, Leppold found the body? Yeah, he found the body right here. So Leppold. Leppold found it. Not Podrick Hill. Podrick Hill was just found... Or was just ordered to hide the body. Augustus Valentine is the victim. The boomerang is the murder weapon. The salon is where he was murdered. And body was found by Leopard Blanchard. So. We want the location of each suspect when the body was found. So Padraig Hill, the butler, was, was knocked out in the library, right? Leopold found the body. Doctor... Says he was playing chess with Alistair. What about Ergen and Gideon? Where were they? Thomas Turner, come to the chess house. Wait, they were at the chess house. Wait, didn't say? Didn't someone say they saw the two young boys go off somewhere, like behind the the field or something? Maybe they were still in the tea house together. Go. So they were, they went back to the tea house. <sighs> okay. Uh, the scroll is not filled in. Early in the morning, blank, 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 in the blank, and blank a blank. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the blank, blank and blank, 
and blank a Lemurian from oh a Lemurian <laughs> a Lemurian you say uh, arrogant um the boomerang a Lemurian boomerang no seal from the salon they stole they stole a Lemurian seal from the salon in the blank at around noon, blank, 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 and blank, the blank on him to blank, blank. I am so confused by this story. What is it trying to say? Somebody's framing somebody? I don't know where the other button is though. They did talk about like, oh, the button is missing. You did it. Yeah, missing button. <gasps> See, Ergen says, I hope the host, that's James Turner, did not notice me when he was leaning over the sleeping eye patch gentleman. So James Turner planted the button on him. Or, well, took the button, I guess. We didn't even see this. Uh, he took the button. Maybe? I mean, it it makes sense to me. Oh, so then, okay, so this has to do with Leppold and James Turner. They, they, I don't know. James Turner, blank. But he doesn't say anything about being drugged earlier in the day. In the, in the library. Wait. Had a glass of sherry with James in the library. Wait, okay, no, yeah, this this makes sense then. Th wait, this this makes sense. What was I saying? James Turner drugged leveled Blanchard in the library and stole a button. Meanwhile, in the blank, 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 and blank, <laughs> a Lemurian boomerang from the salon. Um, I don't know where it's going with this. It could be talking about Gideon and Erkin. Boys went to the tea house first. Did the boys go to the tea house first? Then chest house. Near to Chess House. Because they saw the guy leaving the fountain. So they saw that. But Ergen also says that they must have walked over here. They they circled, right? Because he saw he witnessed the doctor. Two hours later. I'm gonna use a hint. Because honestly, I I have no clue what it's trying to say, what it's trying to have me say. I mean, it seems pretty clear cut that someone, most likely James Turner, took the boomerang, used it to kill Augustus after he had drugged him again. Well, not again, but he drugged Augustus somehow and then planted the button, right? I'm, I'm doing it. I'm getting a hint. My head hurts so much. Okay. Motivation on the drugs, on the criminal activities, or on the identities of the people present. Um, I think we need a clue on the criminal activities, right? Would that help with the paragraphs? On the motivation of suspects. I think we're good on that. I mean, we don't entirely know his motivation, but he's plenty of evidence. He wants them out of the race politics, you know? Because then they can't team up. And if they can't team up, Augustus, who's in the lead currently, falls out of the race. And I think... Okay, it's all for the cult, man. It's, it all goes back to Cloudsley on criminal activities. Let's do that. 
Just a thought, my friend. Someone has been killed, for sure. But some things may have been stolen as well. Some to serve the purposes of the killer. But sometimes, thefts may occur that are unrelated to a murder. Count all the valuables. Some may be missing. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. <gasps> the 12 Lemurian clans! He stole this. So he he stole the steel, the stone slate steel. At the same time, that's why he saw them. He wasn't outside with Gideon. Where the fuck was Gideon? Meanwhile, in the salon, Ergen Patu freaking stole the seal. Drugged Gideon. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Wait, no, where were they? The tea house, the tea house. Okay, okay, we're closer. Okay, we're, we're closer. This sounds absolutely correct to me now, but it's not. It's not. Does it have to do with the psychotics? <gasps> James Turner is part of the Brotherhood? I don't remember him being part of it. I don't remember a doctor. Brotherhood members Alistair and James plotted to turn the ruling moderate and loyalist parties against each other. Over the course of a weekend at James's manor, Alistair murdered the moderate leader and James framed the loyalist leader. Oh my god. <laughs> the Brotherhood runs deep, man. You have proven that I can trust you. Here's the Brotherhood's artifact that I removed from the traitor Keen. Let me educate you how it works. I set it to take heat from this cup of water. Then I change the symbols and use the idol to give that heat to something else. But there is much more that the idol can do. He got Walter Keen killed. After Keen got him into the Brotherhood. Wait a second. The, the triple crossing didn't come from Keen. The triple crossing came from Cloudsley. 